Wow, hello there, and welcome to this tutorial, which is going to be particularly interesting to you if you're on the creative side of things. It's a badly kept secret that uh, your creativity is easily fueled by looking at other people's creativity, and that's what we're doing here. Now, there's a video that I just shared where I'm uh, playing the ukulele, and it doesn't look like much, but after I give you a sneak peek, I'm going to explain to you why it could be interesting to talk about it, actually. Can buy you happiness. Money can buy you love. Money can buy you better kinder. Money can buy you smiles for the rest is the hunter. For the rest is the hunter. So it's me playing this very ukulele that has toys in it at the moment in Vusby, the uh, capital of uh, Gotland. Uh, it's all explained in the lyrics of the song, but basically I wanted to explain to you um, the game of the composition of this song, and it can be quite interesting if one day you're thinking about writing your own songs. Obviously you're not going to be doing it the same way, but just seeing the framework in one uh, in which one can operate can really help you out, come up with ideas and come up with games also, because that's really what's happening here. There's a premise and a game being played. It's a musical game, but I'll explain it to you. Uh, of course, the song is telling the story about uh, an association of cities, trading, so it's got its own vibe, and that's where the inspiration comes from. But inside of that, there's a game happening. Now, I already did a video on the medieval tuning that I suggest you try out, because it's a lot of fun. Basically, it's just tuning up your G to an A, and touch wood, it doesn't break, and then tuning your C down so it's a nice clear fourth between C string and E string. So now the C string is a B. And now you've got this little thing. Money can buy you happiness. That's the first line of the song. Well, you heard that, actually. That's the bit you heard. <laughs> so what's happening here is that the game is that we're going to have in tune or slightly out of tune for that medieval effect, because they liked that kind of thing back then, um, the rubbing. Um, the same note on the G and A string. And then if we always fret the same notes on these two frets, let me show you here. That's a bit nicer. So that's the premise. We've got the same note on the two outer strings all the time, and we've got a clear fourth in the middle. Now that's fun because I'm really singing about a different century. But the game is then, what's going to change? Not the chords, because I'm only changing one note and there's a constant fourth or a fifth if you look at it the other way around. Doesn't matter, B, E, E, B. It's a fourth or a fifth. It's the constant bourdon. What's that in English? Drone that's um, accompanying the song. So what can I change? Well, the notes I play, sure, I can choose, but that's not really the only thing I can change. I can also change the scales that I'm using. So I can have a happy scale, I'm not going to change the rhythm because one doesn't always do that in a song. Sometimes it's nice just to keep the same. This is how we're going to roll for the next three minutes. Uh, but how we are going to roll, what I'm singing about depends on, is it major? So here we've got the fifth, the major sixth on the fourth fret, on the sixth fret, the major seventh, and on the seventh fret, the octave. Now, it's especially clear here, for example, where Started out in German towns, zusammen klappt es richtig gut But then, when it's sad and dramatic, because the Danish king invades Waldemar no mercy holds da 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 dum dum da 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 It's more dramatic, it's more minor. Well, the only difference here is that instead of using a major scale, with the major third here on uh, frets 11. So eight, 
uh, wait, seven, nine, eleven, uh, nine, seven, that's major, right? And then seven, nine, ten, nine, seven, nine, ten, nine, seven, that's minor. So that's the kind of thing that you can use. Now, if you're on the full major scale with this particular system, you're going to have a open two, four, six, seven, nine, eleven, nine, twelve, eleven, nine, seven, six, four, two, oh, two, four, six, seven. You can write them down if you want as you uh, as we go along. But if you want a minor scale. Then uh, when the, for example, when the pirates attack, that's what I use then. And this is how you see how I'm building the song, is I'm always using similar. Similar patterns or similar waves of melody, but then changing them minor or major according to what's happening in the city of Visby. So here we've got open string, second frets, third. Ooh, that's kind of really ominous. Third, second, third, fifth. And if you want to really rub here, just beneath the octave, you've got a six, 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 and a seven, and then seven, nine, ten, nine, seven, nine, ten, nine, seven, nine, ten, nine, seven. That's the minor here we've got. You can even choose if you want a harmonic or a other minor. <laughs> if you want, if you want to go three to six to seven, or if you want to go three to five to seven, that's less ominous, less dramatic. Three to six to seven, that's your harmonic. Is that the harmonic one? I'm getting confused. Anyway, you can try both. Slide around and see what sounds happy, what sounds harmonious, and what sounds ominous or dramatic. So that's the kind of thing you might want to use when the pirates are invading after the Danish king held the city to ransom. Um, and uh, that kind of thing. <laughs> uh, a little, a little uh, thing that I want to mention too is maybe you want to record yourself and... Um, I'm sort of gaining a little bit of knowledge as to how to record myself on the go. And the best way that I've found is either to have a, a setup of uh, microphones with lots of sort of, they, they call it a dead cat, lots of foam, a foam protector to, to take away the sound and the noise of the wind. The wind can blow into microphones. I've had that problem many times. Or you can have a little mini dead cat on a mini lapel sort of... Uh, small mic that you hang on to your t-shirt, which is what I'm using in the video. There you can see. Partnerships in trade all round, silver coins and fancy food. And that was really practical in this particular instance because I was always pretty much the same distance from the microphone, so there was no difference in, in the setup. And the whole point of this video was to actually take what I'm singing live and cut it up with all these other bits from around the city so that you can then have one continuous song without doing what 99.9% .9 of music videos do, which is miming to a playback track. I think that's really boring. <laughs> I don't understand why that still exists. You can actually record yourself outside <laughs> and you can do too. So I recommend buying that Boya mic on Amazon or any mic that you can hang on here. And it's got a long cable to go all the way to the camera, for example, or to your phone on a tripod and make sure if it's a little bit windy, even a little bit, that you have something to protect the mic. And then if you sing one song in different locations, do as I did, which is slice everything up and then take each sort of different bit of a verse from a different location and stick it together in your editing software. And actually, you know what? Let me take the time to show you what that looks like. Thanks, Ben, from the past. Let me take it from here, although you're about to have a quite the week and you don't know it. Anyway, first of all, let me push myself into a corner. There we go. And show you what it looks like. It doesn't look like this. That's the subtitles. Oh, and we're here. So you can see here. Uh, all right. Control L so everything moves together for the demonstration. Ah, you can hear the... Uh, 
If you think I'm uh, in, in playback, just listen for the van here. So this is uh, all the different locations uh, by the walls uh, in the park, which used to be the old harbour. And oh, there's a bit of echo in this one. It's my favourite audio. So it resonates a little bit in the walls. Anyway, so you can see I took the whole song bit by bit and reconstructed it, a bit like a jigsaw, but then I had to take the best takes or what I thought was the least awful bits. <laughs> so you really need to count the beats if you're editing something like this uh, because Lübeck is not so queen and I've had to do lots of following of the arm and going all right my arm is down up here and here it's wait all right so so here i'm just probably gonna cut here i'm just it's just one of the examples i'll just show you how this works oh that's not too bad a bit slow a bit slow so i'll just I'll just tighten that a little bit i don't want things to slow down between the takes and that's how I did it there we go and then that's the thing if you're editing a video from different locations you want to be able to hold the beat throughout not to go and cut and something like this although I did speed up on some takes because I wasn't using a click that's the next level if you want to have a click in your ears or like a drum going boom 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 so you make sure you're on the same tempo all the time which I didn't do but uh, not too dramatic right thank you so much for being curious that's all to your credit well done and I'll see you all very soon for more bye bye <laughs>